Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do something entirely different. Um, what I wanted to show you was my uh, Behringer uh, BCF2000 MIDI controller and how I've been using it to control Lightroom. So um, this is a MIDI controller oftentimes used with, um, with music um, but can be uh, reprogrammed to do anything and Lightroom has the option of uh, working with a MIDI controller. So what I wanted to do really was just give you a quick uh, view of what what I can do with this. Um, it's certainly not going to be a this is a great photo, this is how you enhance it video, um, but equally it might be interesting uh, for people to see uh, the actual MIDI unit here. So. Um, you can see on the screen what I've got is I've got MIDI 2LR and that is the uh, bit of software driver if you like which makes everything work. Um, what you'll see here is as I'm moving between different files the motorized faders also move as well. Um, you can see from the area here on MIDI 2 LR, just exactly what it is that um, I'm adjusting at any one time. And also along here, what I've done is I've made up um, different uh, labels uh, depending on what it is. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to put this photograph as a pick and this is what I'm going to look at editing today. So. Um, I've got exposure and contrast here. What I might do with this today is just have a bit kind of wacky changes, I think. So uh, you can just work your way along and change all the different settings. So um, bringing up the blacks, increasing the clarity, just really um, making it very clear. So exposure, uh, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, clarity, vibrance. This is tint, uh, temperature, sorry. So you can warm it up. And you'll see that the changes are reflected on the screen. Um, so I'm now going to maybe change the tint just to see what that does. Okay, then I've got dehaze. So again, that's going to give me more clarity. It's going to give me a lot of color as well so I'm just going to go a bit bonkers with it um, just so as people can see what it can do okay so now what I maybe want to do is bring the vibrance back down a bit okay working across uh, from dehaze I've got saturation so again I can pop that up a bit um, I can then raise the shadows up a bit more obviously as I say it's not really doing. Now, what I've done here is um, I'm moving on to parametric uh, values. So here I'm doing shadows and then mids, then the lights and the highlights I can bring back down. So you can really do anything. If you decide, well, actually my dehaze is too much, what you can do is push that button and it brings it back. Okay, um, although I've got an undo and redo button, ah, it did work. Um, some of the buttons don't work um, the way that you might have thought uh, on the Mac. Uh, and that's because of the, um, the way that the software is working in the background. So. It's a bit crazy looking here. If I push this one, then um, that resets my exposure. It's confusing here because what I've done is I've made these buttons um, this label. So you can just press this, go to black and white, or you can go back to color. So here, you can choose your graduation, uh, graduated filter, um, and then you can just add it straight away. So here, we might want to do that. Thing is as well that um, the way that it works 
is that you're not really able to um, make the uh, sort of graduated filters. Uh, you, you can't edit those um, on the unit, uh, even if you've got them set up. So it really is just the main settings. So here, I'm just going to take this back down a little bit. Okay, now I want to take the sharpness down at the front. So there we go. I'm going to stop at that. Um, just the reason being that you can obviously see um, what we can do here. We can zoom in. Um, we can zoom out we can flick between a one-to-one -one preview. Um, and I'm just gonna click out of here. And then we're back into the develop module. Um, if you wanted to uh, go into say saturation, which is this button here, these then become all the different colors. So you can change the reds. You maybe change the yellows, maybe knock down some of those oranges a bit that are in the uh, foliage in the foreground. Just to kind of naturalize some of those colors a little bit here. Obviously you've got luminance as well. So if I work at the other side of this range, you know, so we've got blue luminance here, we'll have purple and then magenta. So you really can make quite a few changes without really having to go to the keyboard here. I've changed the hue so again what I can do is go to my blue channel and then that changes the hue of the blue channel. If you want to reset it just push it um, and for me that should be set up to put the uh, color back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to really make it very different. You can see uh, across the top that the LEDs on the uh, bearing unit uh, tell you where your setting is. If I go back here, you can see where my settings are for um, the standard uh, setup to go. Right, well, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you did, then what I might do is look towards maybe trying to put together something either editing a bit better and a bit more that's kind of my workflow or also um, showing you how to set up uh, the the unit and the software. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're interested, give us a, a thumbs up. Um, as per usual, uh, I'll put my Peak Design uh, affiliate code down at the bottom. That's my main thing that I'm doing just now. and. Uh, if you like the peak sign stuff, then uh, use that code, you'll get 10% off. Okay, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.